Hey there, Dirtbike people. I'm Chuck from True Tech, and today I'm going to be assembling the cases on this 2020 300RR. In the video that will probably be previous to this one in the playlist, I installed this upgraded NJ206 bearing. The original bearing was like this. This is 6206, just like the TMs as well. This engine did have a minor crank bearing failure. If you're familiar with the betas, you know that this has been kind of their Achilles heel. Just to verify, I did measure the crank width and check that against the space between this bearing and this bearing and I have about 20 thou of clearance. Something that may also be interesting to some of you is that the aftermarket gas kits for these are back ordered right now. The OEM kit is $280 here in Canada. I was careful when I took it apart. This center case gasket is actually in perfect condition. This is the right side crank seal. All the other gaskets are also intact. I'm going to reuse the clutch cover gasket. Normally I don't reuse any of the gaskets and seals but in this case, because it's $280, I am going to reuse some of them. I just didn't want to reuse the center case gasket because if it fails, it's a really big deal. Let's get to it. Now you guys all know that I love concepts, so let's get into how this crank system is designed and how it works. On the right side of this crankshaft, you can see that there are threads. These are left-hand reverse threads. What's going to happen in the stock engine and in this right side case half is the crank is going to drop into the bearing and it will be a slip fit on this side. Then there's a series of gears and spacers here and the nut pulls the crank into that bearing and it locks the bearing between the crank here and the collar that goes on this side of it. The reason that that's important is because since this is a slip fit, it's possible for the crank to spin inside the inner race of the bearing. And when that happens, this gets superheated and it gets welded to the crank bearing. Now with the stock system, the left side crank bearing is interference fit. What often happens is people drop the crankshaft into the left case half over here. In order to do that, you either have to pull it in or use heat and then the crank bearing is locked onto the shaft. Then they put this nut on and it pulls the crank over, which then takes this inner race, which is stuck to the crank and pulls it over. But the outer race is stuck inside this case half. So then you have side loading. So the inner race is pulled in relative to the outer race. It's my theory that that's why these crank bearings fail. Now it is possible to alleviate that side load. What I personally do is install the crank into the right case half. Then I heat that bearing and drop it on. And then I can relieve the side load if there is any with a drift or by vibrating the crankshaft or bearing assembly. The reason why this upgrade is effective is because this side is a slip fit. I can put the nut on the other side. This side obviously is a slip fit. So as long as the crank isn't physically wider than what the crank cases can accommodate, there is no way to side load the bearings at all. It's a very, very easy install. So I'm just gonna drop that in there. Now the transmission, so nothing difficult with that. Now we have our shift forks. Beware, these little collars go on there. Now I leave this together, but it's really hard to screw it up. So I'm just gonna put this shift fork in there, leave it rotated back a bit. This shift fork goes here. I'm gonna drop that in there. And note that I'm keeping this back so that I can install my shift drum. Now we have our other shift fork with the little roller. Oh. I don't have that, it's not dropped down. There we go, that's all the way. That's dropped down. Now our shift fork and this pin. And again, I've left them apart. Now this side is gonna go down. So that's gonna mate up with our star wheel. So we'll drop that in place. I should mention this one can be a little bit tricky because you have three grooves. This one, this one, and this one. These are not grooves. Notice how they're flat. So this can be a little bit tricky. You wanna make sure that these shift forks go in the top, middle, and bottom groove. This one's the bottom, this one's the top, and this one's the middle. So I'll drop that into place. That just slides in. The shaft can go down, and we should have a free spinning transmission just like that. Now we've got our counterbalance shaft. It only goes in one way. On this side, there's a bearing there, so this end is bigger, that doesn't physically fit. So the big end goes in that hole. Now we've got our center case gasket. I've already got my dowel pin in there. The other one's over here. This is a very, very easy bottom end to assemble now that we've installed that NJ206 bearing. There we go, that just drops together. This little hook goes there. Each bolt has about 
half an inch of thread engagement. I'm going to run these in. I always finish these up by hand. Bottom end assembled. Snip that gasket away there, just roughly. Nice rotation there. Now we should be able to move this crank back and forth a little bit. There we go. It's okay if there's a little bit of resistance, but it does move back and forth. We should have a little bit of end play. I'm gonna throw a little bit of two stroke oil down in that bottom end, lubricate the bearings and the connecting rod. Now I'm gonna take my gasket scraper and I'm gonna cut those gaskets off flush with the case. Now same with this one. Now I'm going to use my die stone to flatten that. Make sure we get a good seal there. Now I need to check my shifting. Now I'm going to change this o-ring. This o-ring tends to stay on the crank while I have it out. 67 thou on that one. I don't mind if it's a little bit thicker. I want it actually. Yeah, 77. Okay, cool. This is probably just a little bit worn. This is a brand new one. This is a critical o-ring. Now I've got the collar. Now this particular collar has a little bevel here and it has a little bevel here. It looks to me like this bevel is a little bit bigger than the other one. And so I am going to have that side facing down. If this was worn at all in a way that I could feel with my finger, I would polish this in the lathe with some Scotch-Brite, but it is not. And if I didn't have a lathe, I would still polish it by hand with some Scotch-Brite in a crisscross pattern like this, but this is in good shape. I've got my OEM right side crank seal here, so I'm just gonna, I have good access to this, so I'm just gonna tap it in. I have seen a couple of bottom end failures because the crank seal is pushed in too far. It rubs on the bearing, creates excess heat and takes out the bearing. Now a little bit of grease on that lip. It's very easy to fold one of these lips in while you're doing this. And what I do is I kind of wiggle it back and forth like this and rotate it because I don't want to fold that lip in. All right, I'm going to bring in right here. You can see that lip is folded in. Now, if I had just continued to keep yarding on it, it would have wrecked it. I'm just back off, spin it a little bit. There we go, right side crank seal, done. Now, left side. Now, I didn't have to buy this crank seal because it's the same as a KTM one. And I change them all the time. So I have them in stock, there's the part number. Same thing here, I'm gonna put some grease around this inner lip, because it is possible to fold these as well. Now for this one, I'm gonna use a socket to make sure that my socket is clean. These can be difficult. You wanna make sure to do it very straight. Finish it with the drift again. Just go flush. Now, this isn't technically part of the bottom end, but this is the output shaft seal. I'm not replacing this because I don't have one, but this engine doesn't have particularly high hours on it, so I'm not worried. And if it did fail, it's very easy to change. So that's why I replaced that center case gasket, even though it was like $60 or something. Quite expensive for one gasket. Now I can feel there's a little bit of extra resistance, but because I checked the crank initially, I know that it's just due to the seals and that's very common. We are ready for the right side. If you like this type of content, you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok if that's your thing. I have a lot of content and I have chosen to try and monetize it by creating a community where I offer courses and a discussion group. Answering DMs and comments takes a huge amount of my time. I would rather spend my time doing things like building engines and spending my personal time with my family and riding dirt bikes and snowboarding and things like that. So if you wanna support what I do and get more value as well, you can join my True Tech community. It's $7 US a month. I've also got a whole bunch of resources on there. Over the years, I've made a Google Doc where I have links to free manuals. And every time I buy a manual from KTM, I have a link to it on there. So there's several pages full of manual links and they're free to anybody on the community. I also have a bunch of troubleshooting spreadsheets, some that I have made, some that Takomoto has made. They're extremely useful, especially for KTM electrical or running issues. If you're interested in anything like that, click the link below, join the True Tech community. Thanks a lot for watching.